Hiya, babe. Say, how about... Ouch! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. <laughs> You all remember Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Ann Southern. But first, your announcer. Maisie, like the fella just said, Maisie Revere. Maybe I ain't so smart, but the way I figure, when a girl walks down the street, very few fellas say, wow, get a load of those brains. That's how I met my steady, Eddie Jordan. I was walking past the drugstore and he whistled for a cab, but luckily I got there first. <laughs> Me and Eddie, we've been going steady now for over a year, but we can't get married because he has an impediment in his back. He can't get off the bed early enough to keep a job. Right now, we're at the employment office of one of the biggest insurance companies in New York. I had to come along because i got to make sure that Eddie fills out the application blank right. If I left it entirely to him, he might tell the truth. Uh, Maisie, since you've answered all the other questions in this application form for me, what shall I fill in in this space where they ask about my education? Oh, well, is it a wide space or a narrow space, Eddie? Wide? Oh, well, that, that means they want a man with a lot of education. How many colleges did you go to, Eddie? None. Oh. Well, um, then put down graduate of Harvard, Notre Dame, and, um, um, Massachusetts, um, Institute of Technology. Graduate of Harvard, mm -hmm. Notre Dame, and how do you spell Massachusetts Institute of Technology? Uh, M-A, uh, M-A, um, you better make that Yale. Look, Maisie, I know this is none of my business, but won't the employment manager sort of challenge this? Mm, yeah, I guess so. Well, what'll I do with this application? Well, I'll ask the clerk at the employment window. Clerk? Oh, clerk? Whom are you addressing, miss? You, am. Um, uh, clerk, I mean Clark. Please take this application into the personnel manager. Whom should take it in? Uh, you, am. Um. And hurry, son. He -um and me -um are in a bit of a hurry -um. Very well, peasant. Oh, but just think, Eddie. Could be you'll soon be a successful insurance salesman earning enough money to make the payments on the engagement ring yourself. Uh-huh. That was quite a ring, too, as I recall. Uh-huh. And it was very practical of you, too. Getting one with room for a diamond. Well, Maisie, honey, you can't have everything. After all, that was a real expensive ring. The band is real green gold. I know. And if you look real close, you can see some of the gold showing through the green. Well, this is the beginning of a new life for both of us, Eddie. Here comes the personnel manager with your application in his hand. He looks very impressed. Gosh, if I'd have known that, I'd have worn a tie. I beg your pardon, sir. Are you Mr. Jordan? Yeah. I mean, yes, sir. Edward Vanderbilt Astor Morgan Jordan? The descendant of our best family, sir. Yeah, all of them, I imagine. Social connections, you know, old chap. Helps with selling insurance. Helps tremendously, eh, what? Quite. Uh, this is my girl, I mean my fiancé, sir. Yes. Millicent de Peister Revere. Revere? Mm -hmm. Any relation to Paul Revere? My father. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. How is Paul these days, if I may ask? Still riding his horse in Boston? Oh, hardly. Peter uses his private train. Maisie, Paul Revere... Oh, hush, Edward. Leave us not mention my father's extreme wealth. You promised when you agreed to take a job here that you'd start at the bottom. Oh, perish the thought, Miss Revere. Why, with this man's qualifications, according to his application, he should be the president of the firm. Now, you see, Eddie, what I tell you? I mean, um, tell you. 
Of course, Mr. Jordan, some of the things you say about yourself in this application are a wee bit difficult to believe. Yeah, I know how you feel. <laughs> oh, well, uh, Edward is so modest about his background, sir. He absolutely refused to write down that he was once knighted on the battlefield as the bravest corporal in the army. A corporal? Mm -hmm. That's odd, Jordan. According to your application, you were a general in the last war. A major general. Oh, don't believe that I was a major general, is that it? No, you're a bit too young. Oh, uh, did I say he was a major general? That's so silly. Yes. He was a minor general. Nice try, Miss Revere. Oh. Not good, huh? Not good. Then I don't get a job. On the contrary, you do. You, you mean, mean it? I admire people with, uh, <laughs> shall we say, imagination. Oh, yeah, that, that sounds better than liar. Oh, when do I start, sir? Well, we've just opened a foreign branch and can use a man. Jordan, how soon can you leave for Paris? Paris? Like in Paris, France? Oh, but Eddie's engaged to me. He can't go to France. That's full of girls. French girls. <laughs> yes. Oh, you don't have to worry about me, honey. I, I can't talk French. Well, maybe not, but you can howl in three languages. Paris is out, Eddie. Miss Kennedy! Miss Kennedy! Well, Eddie, it looks like the landlady isn't home. Well, well, this is my lucky day. Sit down here on the sofa, honey. Eddie... You gotta do something. Sure, sure, baby. Sit down. No, no. I mean about your future and mine, too. And I know you can sell insurance. You mean it's okay for me to go to Paris? No. So stop drooling and listen to me. Now, look. That company we just came from is the biggest outfit in this country. They can use a man who just won't take no for an answer. Come on, baby. Sit down here. Alongside lover boy. That's what I mean, Eddie. You're a man who just won't take no for an answer. Now... If you can just apply that determination to selling insurance, any company would buy you. But, Maisie, I've no experience. I can't sell insurance. Have you ever tried? Look, I never tried to lay an egg either, but I know I can't do it. Well, all you need is a little practice. What, to lay an egg? No, selling policies. Now, look, it's simple. Now, you pretend you're the insurance salesman and I'm the prospective customer. You go out and knock on the door. Okay, but you're wasting my precious energy. You can't sell insurance that way. You can, too. Now, go out and knock. And when I open the door, you put your foot in it so I can't close it. Okay. Gee, this sounds like peachy fun. Here I go. Well, just a second. I'm coming. You don't have to break the door down. Good afternoon, madam. I'm selling... Oh, my foot! Well, Eddie, you should have put your shoes back on first. Oh. Well, go ahead. Okay. Madam, you wouldn't want to buy no insurance today, would you? Insurance, sir? No, I don't think so. See? I told you you can't sell that stuff. Eddie, you're not supposed to give up that easily. Now, look, I'll show you. I'll be the insurance salesman, and you're the prospective customer. You're puttering around the house, and I knock at the door. Okay, I'm puttering. Go ahead. Putter, 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 putter. Okay, Maisie, I'm puttering. Knock already. Oh, good afternoon, insurance salesman. Eddie, why'd you let me wait outside so long? I wanted to show you how tough it was. Well, we insurance salesmen never give up. <laughs> well, good, good afternoon, sir. I represent the, um, you should live so long insurance company. Well, 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 an insurance salesman. Lucky, lucky me. Do come in, sir. I'll uh, go into the kitchen and make some fun. Oh, stop being silly. Sir, are you adequately protected? If you were to drop dead suddenly, could you afford to be buried? Oh, heavens no. And I just couldn't lie around the house, dearie. <laughs> when my wife's new boyfriend came to call, I'd feel sort of in the way. Ah. Ah, now you seem like a very reasonable man, sir. I'm very glad I happened to call. So am I, honey. I was getting lonesome. Come, sit down beside me and talk me into something. Thank you. Now, sir. Uh, sir. Uh, yes, uh, honey. Uh, 
you were saying... Sir, there is no finer investment you could make than in a nice insurance policy. Move closer, honey. Oh. Who's selling who what? Oh, that's better. Are you comfy, salesman? Oh, well, please, honey. I mean, mister, I'm selling insurance. Well, that's all right. This is be kind to insurance salesman week, honey. Uh, now, you just rest your head on my shoulder. Oh, yes, sir. The customer's always right, sir. <sighs> Mister, I realize you're a young man. A very handsome young man. And you're a woman. A very, very woman. Mm-hmm. And if... If something were to happen unexpectedly, would... Would you... Would I what, dear? Oh, well, what I mean is... Now's the time to act. I think so, too, beautiful. This is a wonderful opportunity. I have a lot to offer. You ain't kidding, babe. And insurance is... Is... Is what, gorgeous? Unimportant right now, so kiss me already. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. Yeah, honey. I think the phone's ringing. You. You want to know something, Maisie? What? You're right. About what, honey? The phone. It's ringing. Eddie. Yeah, hon? Tell me again. Tell you what, babe? How beautiful I am. Sure, honey, sure. But tell it to me different this time. I like to hear it different each time. Okay. Maisie, who has the most gorgeous eyes in the world? Mm -hmm. The most beautiful hair and skin? Mm -hmm. The most glorious smile? Now, who in the world can that be? Well, it's me, of course, Eddie. Now, I mean on the phone. Maybe I'd better answer it. Oh, now, Jesus. don't go away. You think I got rocks in my head? Hello, there's nobody home. Hello, uh, that's you, Jordan? Yeah, this is Roger Bentley, the personnel manager of the Security Insurance Company. I'm sorry, I'm not interested. I got all I can... Bentley! Uh, remember you applied for a job this morning? Jordan, I've got a proposition for you. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Bentley. I'm not interested in going to Paris, Maisie says. No, no, no. This is a job here with the home office, Jordan. I've been looking over your application again, and this assignment calls for somebody with your sheer goal. How much, Bentley? Uh, well, Jordan, it's this way. I don't work that cheap. Goodbye. Oh, now, now, wait a minute. Don't hang up, Jordan. Think of what awaits you. I am. And I don't want to keep her waiting too long. I mean, you can get a great job, fine salary, impressiveness. Sell him and you're set for life. Him? Who's him? Uh, J.C. Higginbottom. He's one of the richest men in the country. Why, we've had our men working on him for years to sell him a big policy, but none of them have ever been able to even get in and see him. What's that got to do with me? Well, you land Higginbottom, Jordan, sell him an insurance policy, and you can name your own salary. Mr. Bentley, I'm not the kind of guy who waits till the last minute. I'll name my salary right now. I want 100 a week. And you'll get it, too, Jordan. More even with your commission if you get Higginbottom to sign. Oh? Well, uh, what kind of a guy is this Higginbottom? Well, he's tough, mean, and nasty. Every salesman we've sent to work on him has been thrown out of the office. Sorry, you've got the wrong number. 
Oh, Mr. Eddie, sit down closer. How's this, honey? Yummy. Now, go ahead. Huh? Well, how beautiful I am. You were up to my smile, do you remember? Oh, yes. See, I hope that Bentley doesn't interrupt again. Maisie, your smile Bentley. is... Bentley? Li- Bentley, the personnel manager? Yeah, offered me a job. Maisie, oh, your lips are... Oh, stop with that dr- corny mush, Eddie. What kind of a job? Oh, just a job that pays a hundred a week. Maisie, A hundred hair... a week? Why, that... Oh, no, Eddie, I won't let you go to Paris for that. There's no future in selling insurance. No, this job was here in New York. Oh! Oh, well, when do you start? I don't. Maisie, Oh, Eddie, te- tell me all about it. you got to get to work. But I turned him down, Maisie. You see, the job was mine on condition that I sell a policy to a J.C. Higginbottom. And no salesman has ever been able to get in to see him. Until today. Now, look. You're Eddie Jordan. That's good. Certainly. Nothing can stop you once I've made up your mind. Now, you call Mr. Bentley back. Say you accept the challenge. Look, Maisie, I don't want to have any fights with you. You don't? No. So I'll go sell Higginbottom a policy. Pardon me, Mr. Higginbottom. Jones, how many times have I told you not to interrupt me when I'm busy? I'm sorry, sir. Well, you should be. You just made me miss a two-foot putt. How am I ever going to be in shape for my golf match tomorrow if you keep interrupting me with business? But, sir, there's a gentleman out here, a Mr. Edward Jordan. He says he has a million-dollar deal for you. Jones, I've told you time and time again not to bother me with things like that. This golf game today is important to me. We're playing for a nickel a hole. That ain't peanuts. Uh, yes, sir. Sorry, sir. I-, I hope you win tomorrow's match, sir. Well, I'd better win, Jones. My doctor told me to relax and play some golf. And I'm going to relax if it kills me. Now go away. Now, how did that golf pro say I should do it again? Oh, yeah. Head down. Feet. One, two, three, four inches apart. Shoulders back, eye on the ball. Relax. Relax. Relax now, Tanya. Here I go now. Oh, good, good afternoon, Mr. Higginbottom. Me? Oh, 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 you missed too bad. Not completely. I did knock your hat off. Young man, how dare you disturb my back swing? Sorry, Higgy, old boy. I'm Eddie Jordan. Oh, yes, yes, a million-dollar proposition. Sit down, Jordan, have a cigar. Oh, thank you, Mr. Higginbottom. Mr. Higginbottom, I'm selling insurance. Give me back that cigar. Uh, Good day, Jordan. I got important work to do. One, two, three, four. Mr. Higginbottom, you don't know what you're missing. I do, too, the ball. Now, if you don't mind, Jordan... Uh, not at all, Higgy, old boy. Just have me that drag. But you... you I, thank I, you, I, thank I, you. I... Now, your trouble, Higgy lad, is your stance. You address the ball like this. Use the overlapping hand grip and then... Oh! Jordan! Sorry, sir. That window cost me a... You did that with the overlapping grip? It, it's a sin, Shaggy. The whole trick is in the wrist. Now, about that the policy... Wrist, uh, i got to try that wrist. Uh, Mr. Higginbottom, yeah, yeah. have you given any thought to the future? Yeah, what will happen to your poor wife if you said... No, 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 Higgy. What? Uh, grip the club up high. Oh, hi. That's it. Yeah. Now, suppose you should drop dead suddenly. Yeah, yeah. A left arm straight out now, Just Higgy. Like that? Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, if yeah. you should kick off... That's it. If you should kick off... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, now, now. Yeah. Now, let her go. Yeah. Four! Anything wrong, sir? And I did it, Jones. I broke the window. Isn't that terrific? Right, J.C., but you should have gripped the club a little more firmly. Oh, I see what you mean. Jones, yes. run down to the street and get my ball. And while you're down there, pick up my club, too. Huh? Yes, sir. Now, Mr. Hickenbottom, I have here a policy where, for a very nominal premium, you can live like a king after your death. It's very interesting, Jordan. It's very interesting. I yeah. thought you'd think so, J.C. Why didn't any of my instructors ever tell me about the overlapping grip? Oh, 
Are you busy this afternoon, Jordan? I'd like to maybe take you out for a round of golf, uh, play around with you. Huh? Oh, of course, sir. But now about this. Yeah, what's your handicap, Jordan? Uh, six, Mr. Higginbottom. Mm. Uh, of course, I haven't played in years. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Maybe I can beat you. It's, it's so nice to beat somebody. I mean, uh, you're not scared, are you, Jordan? Oh no, no, sir. Now, but the policy. Yeah, yeah, later, I... Jordan. Later. Uh, what do we play for? A uh, quarter hole? A quarter, sir? Oh, I forgot. Uh, you haven't played in a long time. Uh, let's make it a nickel. Mm -hmm. Yes, miss. What can I do for you? Uh, did he do it? Did who do what? Well, you know. I do? When did I find out? Oh, stop beating around the bush. I'm Maisie Revere. That means something to me? No, but it does to Eddie Jordan. He's my fellow. We're going to be married. Congratulations. Oh, uh, well, that is if Higginbottom buys the policy. Did he? I wouldn't know. Mr. Higginbottom's on the golf course. Oh, well, then Eddie hasn't seen him yet. Oh, Mr. Jordan. Oh, he's with Mr. Higginbottom. They left here just a while ago, arm in arm. Oh, you mean they're buddies? Temporarily. It all depends on who wins the game. Oh, well, then it's a cinch. Eddie's a very good golfer. He never loses, he tells me. Too bad. J.C. thought he had a sucker at last. Uh, you mean... J.C. has a violent temper, miss. Very unreasonable. Poor loser and all that sort of thing. Losing, especially at golf, puts him in a very bad temper. Like in a not buying a policy bad temper? Like in that. Hmm. Now, if uh, Jordan should lose uh, by a miracle... Mm -hmm. Thanks, chum. Where are you going, miss? Down to the golf course. I feel a miracle coming on. <laughs> Darn. Rats! <laughs> How many strokes so far on this old Higgy? Uh, three. Oh, it's eight, old man. It's three. No, no, it's eight, chum. Remember, three darns, four rats, and one... Ooh! <laughs> and little me is just two above par going into the 12th hole. <laughs> I thought I was out of practice. Funny how I haven't lost a knack, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's very funny. Uh, maybe I should sell you a policy on golf instead of your life, J.C. <laughs> You've broken four clubs to date. It'll be five if you don't shut up, Jordan. Now go ahead and tee off, Lucky. Oh, sure, sure. Just watch me, J.C. Perfectly relaxed. Head down, legs apart. Here I go. One, two. What you doing? Hey, you missed. <laughs> hey, you missed. Maisie, what did you talk for? Do you want to spoil my game? Gladly. I mean, oh, uh, I'm glad to meet you, sir. You're, you're Mr. Higginbottom, aren't you? And you're Miss Revere. Well, I'm glad to see you, miss. <laughs> I'm almost as glad as I am to see Jordan, miss. <laughs> Look, Maisie, we're playing for a nickel. And it isn't cricket to talk while I'm trying to concentrate. You, you might ruin his game, Miss Revere. <laughs> Not that I can't use the... Uh, slight edge. Uh, but if Eddie did happen to win, Mr. Higginbottom, uh, that won't affect his chances of selling you a policy, will it? Hardly, Miss Revere. <clears throat> Hardly. <clears throat> That's what I thought. Well, uh, Eddie, go ahead and hit the ball, if you can. Don't worry about me, Maisie. I know what I'm doing. And I know what I'm doing, too. Go ahead. Hit it. I dare you. Oh. You do, do you? <laughs> Relax now, Jordan. Relax. That's the secret, you remember? <laughs> yes. Uh, quiet, everybody. Here goes. One. Two. Four. You're not very educated, Eddie. After two comes three. Where's the ball? Look down, Jordan. <laughs> Sorry, old chap. Maisie, you made me miss it. Me? Oh, if you can't play, Mr. Jordan, don't blame it on to me. I... Oh, I'll show you. One, two. Does it always take you so long to hit the ball? <laughs> well, you're coming closer, Jordan. Eddie, why do you always miss the ball? Is that the way golf is supposed to be played? <laughs> Well, that's not a very clear answer. Maisie, please try to be quiet, will you? Oh, I'm not bothering you, am I, Mr. Higginbottom? Oh, hardly, my dear. I'm enjoying every miss. I, I mean, every word. Quiet yes. now, please. Mm. I'm trying to relax. Oh, well, all right. I haven't said anything. Well, here I go again. One, two. Well, 
What kind of a club are you using, Eddie? My driver. Oh. Well, I go up to the ball. I take my stance. I thought you took your driver. Quiet! I take my stance. I move around like this. <laughs> you have ants in your stance. Oh, <laughs> just, will you? Mr. Higginbottom, please make her keep quiet. Me? Yes. Well, we haven't really met, and I never talk to strangers. Oh, that's what I like, a perfect gentleman. Well, go ahead, Eddie. You've had five chances, and you've missed every time. Maybe the next time you'll be lucky. Mm. And stop shaking so much. You're supposed to relax. I'll relax, all right. Here I go. One, two. Button your shoe. <laughs> <laughs> One, two. <laughs> well, maybe you'd better try some other numbers, Eddie. One and two seem to be very unlucky for you. I'll hit that ball for take ball, Eddie. Stand back. One, two. <laughs> <laughs> One, two. <laughs> Just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Here's Maisie. Well, Eddie had 35 strokes in that hole. And with me heckling, he almost had another one. By the time he came to the last hole, he didn't need a caddy to find his ball. He needed a lantern. <laughs> Old J.C. won the match and the nickel. But it cost him a big insurance policy. He was so happy to have finally beaten Eddie that he was more than glad to buy a life policy. I needed a hurricane policy. Because after the game was over, I had to blow in a hurry. But when Eddie sent that job with the insurance company and realized I did what I did because it was the only way, he forgave me. Well, i got to run home now and get dressed. Tonight, Eddie's taking me to a movie to celebrate. Of course, he suggested a nightclub, but on Eddie's income, that's no fun. The minimum is always his maximum. <laughs> You have just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. <laughs> Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Hans Conrad, Pat McGeehan, Frank Nelson, Jerry Hausner, and Peter Lees. Jack McCoy speaking.